Hey, hey everyone, Stockton here from Media Authentic, and what we're gonna do is quickly go over how easy it is to get set up with a real-time report that solves a lot of problems that GA4 has. The biggest one being that there are no options to see performance broken down by real-time data. There's a 24 to 48 plus hour delay for any of the data to show up inside of the standard reports or inside of explorations inside of the GA4 UI. And if you're looking at the reports where it says real time and it shows the last 30 minutes, while that may serve as somewhat of a hit counter, it actually doesn't have any of the performance metrics that you are going to want. So let's say you're running campaigns, you're launching uh, new CRO experiments, and you wanna be able to see if things are working, if they're not working, did something break, are the campaigns, the landing pages working? And so the ability to have not just hit counter of how many events that we have, but what were the actual landing pages for these different traffic sources? What are the session sources, session medium, the session campaign for these? And what is the conversion rate for those landing pages, for those sources, for those things? So this report solves all of that. And it is right here on this page that we're going to go through how easy it is to get that set up with just a few clicks of the button. So let's first review if you're eligible to do this. You have to be linked to BigQuery as one of the conditions. So if we head on over to your analytics UI here, we can quickly just go to admin in the bottom left. Then we can scroll down a little bit and click on BigQuery links to see if our property that we want to connect to is linked to BigQuery. And here we can see a link, so this is a good sign. We're gonna click into this. Now the kicker here is you have to actually have this streaming one turned on. If you don't have the streaming turned on, then you're going to have just a daily events table, which is not real time. So that is a, a BigQuery table that processes every day. Um, but what we want is the real time data, which is this streaming data. So this shows up within seconds of events happening on your website. So this is a prerequisite to being able to see real time data. So you're going to have to come in and make sure that your streaming is turned on. If this is the first time you're turning it on, it will take 24 to 48 hours for that initial uh, connection to be made between analytics and BigQuery. But then after that, it will be basically real time within seconds of the events happening. So that is prerequisite number one. The page that we're on right now has a field here where it's asking for your GA4 data set ID. So where do we find that? That is also going to be inside of BigQuery. So let me show you where that is. If you head on over to the Google Cloud website and you go to BigQuery, you know, go to console.cloud.google.com. You can even just go right forward slash BigQuery or come into the navigation menus, go to BigQuery and choose SQL workspace. From here, you're going to notice your project on the left. So this is what we would call the project ID. And then if we open this up, we can see data sets inside of the project. So we have our project, we have data sets. Now, the GA4 data comes into a data set that looks like this, where it's analytics underscore, and then your property ID is what this number represents. So if we were to come back to GA4, we could go to setup, no, sorry, property settings. There we go. Here's our property ID, 307-617-623, and that should match what we have right here. So analytics underscore property ID. From here, all you're going to do is click on this as a heading. No need to go into the drop down and see any of the different tables that are inside this data set. Just click on the data set itself right here. And this is your data set ID. Google also has this nice little copy button. So we're just going to click that, go in and copy this directly onto the page. So let's go ahead and fill this out and show you the next step of how easy it is to make this yours. From here, we're going to fill in some basic information. And right here, we're going to paste in our data set ID. So I'm going to go ahead and paste that in, agree to not resell this and hit get my report. Now, obviously, we're going to have a nice looking video here on this thank you page with these instructions. But for now, what we need to do is just sit back and wait and look in our inbox for this email to come through. So there it is. Real-time dashboard inside. What we're going to do is click into this email and then click the link that is personalized just for you to open this report and save your own copy. Now, this is where you might potentially run into problems. What you need to make sure is that the email address you're signed in with in your Google browser is the same email address that has access to this project and this data set.
So that could be where if you get any permission errors or it says it doesn't load or something like that, make sure that you're in the same email address that you're logged into in the browser. So that's for example, up here in the top right for my browser settings. And then as I'm logged in, in the same spot here, that that email address has access inside of BigQuery. Okay, what we can see immediately is this is the report that is generated. So right now it's not saved. I don't have it uh, in my own library yet, but to make it yours, all you have to do is come up here into the top right and hit the edit and share button. You may have to actually kind of hover. You can see how it says save and share. When I hover, it actually says edit and share. So we're going to hit edit and share, and this is going to pop up a little review data thing. Here you can actually see all of the queries that we use in order to get you this really good sessionized data where you can see performance by landing page and all of the events that are happening and get around all of those different nuances and downfalls that the GA4 UI has. So we're going to hit acknowledge and save and now it's going to actually put this, now it's actually in my uh, report listing of all my reports, my, I don't know what it's called. I forget the words, but now this is in all of my reports. It's saved in my account. It is mine. So what I may want to do is actually come to the pages and just delete this welcome page. I already saved it. Please feel free to delete this after it is yours. You no longer need this welcome page. From there, you're going to land on a page that looks like this. So this is the overview page. And you can see that no, there's no data flowing. So one of the key things we wanted to help mitigate against is all of these queries running rampant. Every time you make an adjustment, every time you do an interaction, it's going to run the query. So just to make sure that you're not getting way overly billed, and I'll show you how to monitor that, uh, with all of these things, we're going to have it off by default. So if you actually want to start seeing your data turn on, then what you can do is come here and turn this little switch to the on. And from that moment on, it's going to run the query and you're going to begin to see the data start flowing. So let's actually take this in view mode. And of course here you can see, okay, do you want to see everything from the last five minutes, the last 30 minutes, the last one hour, or just for the entire day as uh, worth of data. So no sessions in the last five minutes, nothing's really happening on this website. Let's go to something like all just to have a little bit more data. Okay, now we can see the number of sessions broken down by how many minutes ago these happened. What's my breakdown by category and traffic sources. So these are gonna be session sources that have the data here. Now, the, one of the coolest things is the ability to remove the parameters from the URLs. So you can see here that these landing page, this one has links with UTMs, UTMs on it. Well, we wanna actually combine all of those landing pages so that the UTMs don't make separate lines and everything can be combined together. So there we have it. Now we've cleaned up all of those URL parameters and everything is back fine with the world. Of course, everything is cross dynamic. So if I click on Google as a source, then everything else is going to filter and only show me, for example, landing pages that came from that traffic source. Same with the, you know, very similar concept with event monitor, we can see a list of all of the events. We're still on the day, like the whole day period here. And then again, we can clean up those URL parameters. Let's move on to the e-commerce report because if you are an e-commerce company, this is one way we like this site that we just set it up on doesn't have any e-commerce data, but here you'd be able to see the purchases as they're happening. What are the different conversion rates between your view item, your add to cart and your purchase, as well as the overall conversion rate, slice and dice and filter that how you will using the filters on the left and then have a nice breakdown of the performance by your different sources. So from each source medium combination, how many view item lists, how many view item add to cart purchases, and what is the conversion rate for each one of those. So if you're starting a new campaign, you want to monitor the source medium of that, then you can see the real-time breakdown of each one of those. Now this is where it gets really interesting is because the queries are what are going to cost you in BigQuery. It's most likely going to always fall under the free tier, but if you are a company that does have much more usage or there's many more people looking at your report, then you're definitely going to want to keep an eye on monitoring how things go. The point of the monitor here as well is to help you understand if you are within the free tier limits that BigQuery has for queries. So every BigQuery account has one terabyte free of queries every single month. So you can see that in this account here, we basically were hitting hardly anything. So maybe four or five gigabytes per day. 
And then at the end of the month, so you can see here, we went from June to July, the usage reset. So now we're back down to zero. Then we started running some queries some more. And then bam, one day we had this huge spike where on that day we were running the port report a ton. And so usage jumped up 134 gigabytes. Now that's probably fine, right? Because we have one terabyte free every single month. But if we were doing this every single day for 30 days, then we're gonna be at three or four terabytes for the month. Each additional terabyte is billed at $5 per terabyte. So if you do end up going over and you, you spend 10 terabytes, then your bill may be around $50 for that month because of your query usage. So this will help you kind of monitor how your queries usage is going. And if you need to maybe keep the off uh, report status to be off. So you can always come back and turn this off so that it's not running up your queries. But do keep in mind that if you're sharing this with multiple people or you're doing a lot of cross filtering and uh, things like that, that your queries will go up and then you just have the cost monitor there to help monitor that and adjust if anything does need to happen. All right, there you go. Let us know if you have any questions and what you think of this real time report.